This is your weekly report on corruption in the Philippine government. Police arrested a retired member of the Philippine Army who allegedly robbed a convenience store in Santa Mesa, Manila on Thursday, the 7th of March. The Manila Police District identified the suspect as Alberto Amador, 54, a resident of Tondo, Manila. The suspect was arrested inside his house at around 12.30 am today, the 8th of March. In a follow-up operation conducted by the Santa Mesa Police Station personnel together with the members of MPD Criminal Investigation Section and Abad Santos Police Station, based on the closed-circuit television footage on Thursday, the suspect, who was armed with a gun, entered the convenience store in Barangay 592, Santa Mesa at around 2 a.m. The suspect was seen showing his gun to the two store clerks while ordering them to open the store's cash box. Police said the suspect took away around 11,000 pesos cash from the store. Recovered from the suspect's possession were motorcycle, a black pistol, two magazines loaded with 15 pieces of live ammunition, 19 M16 blank bullets, 70 live ammunition, 9 different IDs, and a camouflage set of keys. The arrested suspect is now detained at PS8 and facing robbery charges. A police officer was found dead Thursday in Yusin Town in Masbati province. Three days after unidentified men shot his wife dead, Police Brigadier General Andre Perez Dizon, Baikal Regional Police Director, said in a report that Patrolman Samuel Barulo Jr., 31, was found dead around 1.30 p.m. with a bullet wound on his head in Barangay Bunasut. An initial investigation said the victim left the house where the wake of his wife was held to take a bath but failed to return after an hour. His relatives looked for him and he was later found near a creek with blood on his body. His wife, Cheryl, a 32-year-old college student, was shot dead at 5.55 p.m. on Monday, the 4th of March, in Barangay Bagumbayan in Masbati City. An initial report said that while walking from school on the way to their house, Cheryl was approached by two unidentified men and one of them shot her at close range in the head. Police recovered an empty shell and one slug in the area. The slain cop was assigned at the 1st Masbati Provincial Mobile Force Company. They both lived in Barangay Bagumbayan with their three children. Lieutenant Colonel Maria Luisa Kalubakwib, Baikal Police Spokesperson, said they were still identifying the motive behind the killings and if the two incidents were connected. A barangay captain in Tam, Abra was unhurt in an ambush in Bangud yesterday. Bong Kerano, 60, of barangay population in Tam was driving his car when his vehicle was shot in barangay Bliss angered. He sped off and hid at his house. Initial investigation showed that a car behind Kerano's vehicle, which was driven by Banjo Claveria, said to be a drug suspect, was the target of the gunman. Claveria was wounded and taken to the Sears Memorial Hospital for treatment. 27 bullet shells for an M16 rifle were recovered at the scene. A 51-year-old barangay councillor was shot dead on Saturday afternoon, the 9th of March, in Barangay Pagolangan West here. Police identified the victim as Marilyn Escatin from San Juan, Batangas. Investigation said the victim was walking when the suspect, Ilias Joey, a counselor of Barangay Pagoling in West, approached and shot her. She died on the spot and the suspect fled. Lawmen are conducting follow-up investigation and combing surveillance footages in the area. A jail guard was gunned down on his way to work to the Ilocos Sur Provincial Jail in Barangay Talab here on Monday morning, the 11th of March. Police identified the victim as Jason Borrientos Parchmento, 45, a former policeman and prison guard 3 of the Ilocos Sur Provincial Jail run by the Ilocos Sur Provincial Government. Investigation disclosed that the victim was driving his car when an identified gunman shot him. The suspects fled and the victim was rushed the victim to the hospital but he died on the way. Eight empty shells of a caliber 45 pistol were recovered in the crime scene. The victim from Makati City and presently residing in Barangay 7, Vigan City where he got married was a police officer assigned to the Police Regional Office 1 in San Fernando City, La Union but was dismissed from the service for being absent without leave. Police are conducting follow-up investigation. A police intelligence agent based in Common, Cotabato Province, credited for his accomplishments in locating members of local terrorist groups wanted in course for heinous crimes, died in an ambush in General Santos City at about dusk Sunday. The slain Corporal Ricky Mendoza Gomez, who belonged to the Carmen Municipal Police in Cotabato, was in General Santos City for a training on advanced police intelligence networking proficiency, handled by instructors from the Police Regional Office 12. 
An initial report on Monday from the office of PRO 12 Director Brigadier General Jim Ali Macarig and Barangay Tambler in General Santos City stated that Gomez was riding a motorcycle when he was shot in the head and upper torso with 5.56 M. 16 assault rifles by still unidentified men as he traversed through a busy stretch of a highway in Barangay Sinol, killing him on the spot. Gomez served as a police intelligence operative in Pickett Town, Cotabato prior to his assignment in Common, also in the same province. More than 60 people had been killed gun attacks in Pickett since 2021. Some perpetrators, positively identified by investigators and Gomez, are now subject of police manhunts. Local executives and police officers in the province told reporters that Gomez had remarkable accomplishments and even got citations for his roles in tracing whereabouts of wanted persons and members of the Dollar Islamic and the Bang Samoro. Islamic freedom fighters implicated in deadly terror attacks and extortion. Makarig said he has directed their intelligence units in Cotabato province and in General Santos City to cooperate with police investigators who are working to identify killers of Gomez for prosecution. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority on Monday announced the removal of a number of personnel from their positions, citing allegations of providing protection to Calorum syndicates. Recently, we discovered that Calorum syndicates are trying to infiltrate the MMDA. We immediately identified that, acting MMDA chairman Donna Red said in a press conference. He said the personnel involved have been relieved and there is an ongoing investigation. Our personnel who have possible involvement have been relieved particularly those in our anti-calorum unit who are in the investigation, intelligence and investigation office. The investigation is ongoing. We have coordinated with the DILG for investigation on the criminal aspect, he said. The ombudsman suspended Paolito Santos who was appointed acting NFA administrator last week, and Jonathan Yazan, acting department manager for operation and coordination of the NFA, the DA said in a statement on Monday. Last week, the ombudsman ordered the preventive suspension of NFA administrator Odorico Bayarco and more than 100 employees over the alleged disadvantageous sale of rice buffer stocks. Due to the suspensions, DA Chief Francisco T. Laurel Jr. will retake the helm of the NFA. Laurel also appointed Director for Harry Laxon as officer in charge Deputy Administrator of the NFA to ensure the agency's continued operations, the DA said. The promotion of an army official met a setback at the Commission on Appointments as his wife showed up at the Senate on Tuesday to block it. Tesla's rise Sevilla recalled the allegedly harrowing events she went through at the hands of her husband Ronaldo Sevilla. She said her husband does not deserve to be promoted. The military official was nominated for promotion to Brigadier General of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. No amount of sorry, no amount of money will make me back down. Nothing will make us back down. We deserve to be vindicated, Tessa told reporters in a press conference on Tuesday before the CA confirmation hearing of her husband. She added that she has been silent long enough and has endured for too long the alleged abuses of her husband. I can't keep quiet anymore. We have endured for a long time. What's painful is that we have been tolerating his lack of financial support and yet he still has the gall to womanize, she added. Apart from committing adultery, Tessa said she and her children were physically and mentally abused by Sevilla. What hurts me is that the children see it. It may look innocent to have been pushed, accidentally pushed, but I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. I was pushed. I thought I would miscarry new child so I applied for a protection order, she said in tears. Tessa's 12-year-old daughter who accompanied her at the Senate, likewise testified that she and her siblings were subjected to Sevilla's abusive acts. In the end, Tessa asked the AFP to look into the growing incidents of housewives being abused by their partners who are military officials. The gentleman of the AFP, I hope that you're hearing this and this is the right time. I hope that it's going to be a precedent and I hope that you look into the very sad plight of the wives, mothers, partners of your men in the AFP. It's about time, says, she appealed. The CA panel on national defense, meanwhile, held an executive session to discuss Sevilla's appointment. A job order employee of the municipal government of Inaburn, Negros Occidental was found dead in Sicio Belugo, Barangay Sank on Monday morning, the 11th of March. The victim was identified as 43-year-old Daryl K.A.O. of Barangay Asia, Police Major Janik Bermudez, Hinoba and Police Chief said the victim was driving a motorcycle with a friend from Basse, Negros Oriental when they were waylaid by an unidentified person upon reaching Barangay Sank. Bermudez said the victim was hit in the head and sustained a lone stab wound in the chest. The victim's friend suffered minor injuries when they fell off the motorcycle. The suspect fled. Bermudez said the victim's friend left the area due to fear. 
The victim was found injured on the roadside and was taken to a hospital but was declared dead on arrival. He said the suspect targeted the victim and might have waited for him to pass by the area. Bermudez said they have identified the suspect and investigation is ongoing. Police have yet to establish the motive but they are looking into personal as a possible motive in the incident. Murdaf Anthony Reliquius, in a statement, mourned KAO's death. These acts should not be tolerated. This is an act of people who do not fear the Lord, Reliquius said. He sympathized with the KAO family and assured them that the local government will support their quest for justice. A jail officer fatally shot two women before taking his own life using the same gun in Valenzuela City on Wednesday morning, the 13th of March. The suspect was identified as Mahel Manibel, a member of the Bureau of Jail Management and Penologic. He died from a self-inflicted bullet wound. The victims, Lainey Bernardino, 55, and her daughter Mary Grace, 27, both succumbed to gunshot wounds in the head, police said. Based on the police report, the incident occurred around 2.45am inside the victim's residence on Navarrete Street in Barangay Arcong Beto, Valenzuela City. Police said the suspect had a heated argument with the victims regarding his relationship with another daughter of Laney. Manny Bale attempted to enter the house, but the victims intervened, prompting him to shoot them with a pistol. Upon seeing the two women lifeless, Manny Bale turned the gun on himself, resulting in his death. Authorities recovered five spent bullet case of a 9mm pistol at the scene of the incident. The Philippine National Police's Regional Internal Affairs Service has filed an administrative case against three policemen over the warrantless arrest of film director Jade Castro and three others for the alleged burning of a minibus in Catanolan, Quezon. This was confirmed by Police Regional Office for a Public Information Office Chief Police Lieutenant Colonel Chitradal Gayoaran to GMA News Online. Yes, there is. To know if there are lapses in the arrest, she said. The announcement was initially made by Castro's lawyer Mike Marpuri during a briefing on Tuesday. I got a phone call just this morning from PNPRIAS now they filed motor proprio administrative cases against the chief of police, the investigator, and the arresting officers, Marpuri said. Marpuri identified the officers as Police Captain Daniel De La Cruz, Police Senior Master Sergeant John Jan Borden, and Police Corporal Christian Abanilla. He said the preliminary hearing has been set for Friday. That's all for this week. I'll see you next week with more stories of corruption and foolishness within the Philippine government.